Thanks for asking for it. Uh, the person asked if we had any of these CDs. We do not. We recorded for 39 years for the Rounder, Flatter, Blacker Record Company. And uh, then they sold out to a big conglomerate. And so we can only get records sometimes. I haven't figured out the system yet. But I have figured this out. It doesn't matter which records you order from them, they send you the ones they have. <laughs> but I didn't want these. That's what you get. And take them. But uh, we might have some of these somewhere down the line. And this is a wonderful song. It's written by a man that, uh, well, we weren't friends for a long time. And, and the truth of the matter is, it, it was my, my own fault for my own small mindedness. But here's what happened. We didn't even know we played folk music. And we got a call from a place up in Michigan, which is in a part of Kentucky hardly anybody ever goes to. And they wanted us to come play at the Michigan Folk Festival. And I, I said, well, we don't know no folk songs. And they said, yes, you do. And, and so we said, well, we're, we're needing to work. This was like 38, 39 years ago. We said, we'll be up there. And, uh, about a month before we was ever supposed to go, a guy called up and said he was the cultural liaison officer and said that he would ask if we would be willing when we came to the, to the, to the folk festival to do a workshop. Now English is my second language, but I have studied Latin in great depth and I realized that the two root words there was what I had become a musician to avoid. And so I said, well, is anybody else doing one? And he said, everybody else is doing one. We didn't even know what kind of work they had lined out for us. We went out to the barn, tried to load up whatever tools we thought we could get in the van. You know, we had, I can tell you, what we, the first thing we took was a spud bar. Because there ain't very many things you can't beat to death with a spud bar. <laughs> And, and I always like it. I'm glad I'm telling this here. It's an honor because I told this in New York a couple of weeks ago. And I said spud bar. And, and my theory is nobody in New York's ever done any work. <laughs> Anyways, we, we load up a spud bar and we took a nine pound hammer. This was back when you could still get a nine pound hammer. And I'm going to tell you, of course, now I realize everybody's probably not splitting their own cordwood these days. But just go down to Walmart and try to score a nine pound hammer. They got a thing in there that looks like a nine pound hammer. But you pick it up and you look at the top and it says it weighs seven and a half pounds. And can you imagine you had a whole piece of ironwood out in your yard you wanted to split and you come out there and hit it with that seven and a half pound wedge? Well, told you that to tell you this. <clears throat> we put it in there. We, uh, we took a two-ton hydraulic jack, and we didn't take the big old toolbox that rolls across the floor, but we took one on top. And we got out there, and we was unloading this stuff. And the, uh, the cultural liaison officer come up. And he didn't insult us. I think that's what a cultural liaison officer does. He tries to integrate rednecks into the general public in a way which is neither to creates the least amount of angst for both the general public and the primitive rednecks themselves and there are a lot of people in michigan that hadn't seen an australopithecine probably in 20 or 30 years so he came up and he said you will be on the workshop with utah phillips and i hear utah phillips but the part I didn't know was Utah Phillips at the Folk Festival was like a deity. And, and here's the other part you might not know down here in Florida. At the Folk Festival, they have both kinds of liberals. They have the hippies and the beatniks back in. And whenever Utah Phillips would walk by, the hippies would throw their shirts down so he didn't get his feet wet or muddy or anything. And the beatniks would sit by the trail and, and say poetry like sin sin a chin amo popra up 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 ting ting. I had to learn that. That's not a poem that I knew from third grade. And uh, 
So Utah Phil's walking along there and I thought I better follow him up to this workshop. And we get up on top of this little knob up there at the Michigan Folk Festival. There were two chairs sitting there. And I was relieved. I thought this is the kind of work I've been looking for all my life. Without they bring in two or three Holstein cattle need to be milked by hand. I like this job already. And so about 30 seconds before we were supposed to start our work, whatever it was, the cultural liaison office came up and said the subject of this workshop is the politics of folk music. <laughs> that is exactly what occurred to me at the time and nothing new has happened since. <laughs> but I, it, it turned out I, I didn't need to angst over because, and here's what happened. And I, I hate to rule out you young people. I really do, but you're not going to get this next one, but this is the truth. When it, back when I was a little redneck, the world boxing champion was a man named Rocky Marciano. He didn't have no tassels on his boots. He didn't have no colorful tattoos. Rocky Marciano's philosophy of boxing was this. When the bell rang, meet the opponent in the other corner. When he gets tired of hitting you, knock him out. <laughs> and the best thing that most people in my generation ever learned off Rocky Marciano is you can get the snot beat out of you in a fight and still win it. Because that's the way he fought. 49 straight bouts, never lost a fight. Anyways, told you that to tell you this. When it was like they rang a bell in that workshop and Utah Phillips jumped up and he was angered. He was mad. He was P.O.'d. And the part that confused me at first was, it was the audience that he was mad at. He was lecturing them. He was telling them. I was kind of sitting there relaxed like there's nothing here for me to do. I could have left my spud bar at home. I mean that literally, not metaphorically. As if I were a presidential candidate. <laughs> Anyways, you got to drag them all. <laughs> Utah, I finally discovered, was telling these people how much better off our country would be if all the farmers was communists. And I was a farmer. And Utah Phillips got over it. I never did it for a long time. He'd come around and tried to give us this song, and for years I was afraid to do it because I thought it would make me a communist, but we did, and I'm not. Take us in. Take us in. We have rode the orphan train. 